Hey guys, one Chloe here. In today's episode of BitX 101, do you want to take a look on what kind of hardware I do use and especially what kind of tools I do use whenever you or I want to solder a BitX. So let's get started and right into it. So as you can see, we're currently taking a look on my messy desk and uh, yeah, please ignore the mess in the background. We do have a couple of tools here in front of us and this will be the topic of today's episode as well as a big soldering station here to the right. All the tools that I will present you today, you can find links to them in the video description down below. So check them out if you want to get them or please do your due diligence and take a look on different stores or whatever. Maybe you get a better price somewhere else. I can just point you to those yeah, sales where I do know where these exist. So let's get started with probably the most important tools that you do need whenever you try to do a little bit of SMD soldering, especially when we're talking about the bit X. So obviously you do need something like a tweezers, like these two different kind of tweezers. I do have one that does have this uh, yeah, kind of wick here in front. It's just some ordinary tweezers, nothing special about them. They usually come with some sort of repair kits or do-it-yourself kit. Um, if you do order yourself some sort of an iFixit kit or something like this, if you want to repair your phone, you usually do get them for free in there as well. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm really willing to put a link to anything like that in the video description down below. There's nothing special about them. Um, if I do bring them closer, we can see that they are a little bit tilted, not, not really, but sometimes, you know, when you do use a little bit too much force, just, just use something to bend them back into position. And I do usually use this one here from time to time. I'd use this one, uh, this one, which does have this bend here in the front. I do like to use this for really, really small components, uh, but for all these S and D components that you usually sort on these studio self kits for a bit eggs, I do tend to use this one here. So obviously you do place all the components with this stuff. Uh, I also do have a scissor here, which I primarily use just to cut this tape. And uh, this tape that I do use here is some electrical tape that I just basically use for every kind of project that I'm working on, especially when, when we're talking about electronics, where you need to isolate cables and stuff like this. It's basically just from Amazon or from the hardware store next by. So just pick them up there. There's nothing really special about this. And obviously is a, usually everybody should have something like that at home. Uh, something that I do like to use are these small non-sharp syringes here that I do have. Uh, what I do, as you can see inside here, is the solder paste. And uh, usually what I do with my workshops or whenever I do some sort of a soldering video, I do preheat the, the board and then I do apply with this syringe the solder paste onto this. I do find this is really, really simple and I do enjoy it in, instead of using any other tools, I do think this is probably one of the most and easiest way to get your solder paste on the required position. And I can just I can just express from all these workshops that I did, usually the people get it pretty fast and it's just a little bit of handling and get used to how much pressure and force you need to squeeze out the appropriate amount of solder paste that you do need on a certain position. This one here, the syringes, I did get them in the pack of six or five, I believe. I'm not really sure about that from Amazon. So I will put out a link to that in the video description. And full disclosure, these links in the video description are affiliate links. If you do use them, you do not pay anything more, but this helps out this channel. All right. So talking about this, inside is the solder paste. And let me quickly show you the solder paste. I do use the Chip Quick TS. 391SNL50 and this is solder paste that I do use and that I find personally is the best for all these projects, especially these BitX projects that I'm working on. I do order this from Alice Shop and I will put down a link to Alice Shop in the description down below. I'm not sure if they're from the Netherlands or Belgium, somewhere there, but this solder paste is just brilliant. If you can find this somewhere else, just 
just Google for this chip quick TS 391 SNL 50. This is perfect. It does the job perfectly and it is just the best that I could use. I tried out a couple other ones. Let me quickly grab that from a pack here. I do have a cheap one that I ordered from Amazon. This was the first sort of paste that I really ever used. Uh, it's not that good. It does have a really, really low melting point and therefore when you do place a couple of components and solder them on and you then preheat another section the chance of actually making this one here at another position f uh, like a fluid again is pretty high so this is not really recommended uh, so therefore i will no longer use this i used this in one of my first videos ever about a bit eggs but this chip crick here is just brilliant it's kind of expensive to be honest but it is worth the money it's literally it's worth the money all right, speaking about soldering, it might be that you do have an issue from time to time and it might be that you have messed up something or I don't know, like soldered a bridge between two legs of a component or soldered way too much on there. You really need something like a desoldering rig. This here is also from a hardware store nearby. It's just a desoldering rig. Uh, I mean, I can put a link to that in the video description down below as well. It's just try to find this somewhere. It's yeah, it's just a desoldering rig. I'm sorry if I'm not really entertaining you about all these tools, but I'm, I'm trying to be as representative here on all these tools as I can be in order to give you the best advice, uh, which is do your own due diligence and search out for this. So with this desoldering rig, you can use this to remove solder from a certain position where you might have issues or where you might have created a solder bridge. And speaking about solder bridges, in one of the future videos of the BitX 101 series, will I show you what you can do if you do have any issues soldering and how you can resolve them. Speaking about these issues, this brings me over to something that I do have here, which is flux. And flux is really, really handy. Whenever you solder something on, especially with solder paste, there is a point where the solder paste no longer wants to make connections or stuff like this. You just apply this here, and this is in this sort of hard format. It does give, it does exist in like a liquid form and, and stuff. I just use this one here, and then I usually do have uh, a tool from iFixit. It, it looks like a really, really small spoon that I do use and then I just apply it on the board. Uh, but I do recommend you, when you order yourself a desoldering wig, get a little bit of flux. It's really helping, especially use a little bit of flux on the desoldering wig and then all the excessive solder paste will apply to the wig. Then you can just clip off the wig and there you go, you remove the issue. Obviously for the BitX, I usually do have different sorts of stencils, especially for the ASIC. Uh, I used to solder them by hand. It was hell of a mess and it took really, really long. With stencils, you really have no issues as long as you do follow the rules for applying a stencil and applying the appropriate amount of pressure. Speaking about stencils and yeah, just fixing stuff on there. You might come into the situation where you do have the issue that your board looks like a mess. And for that, I do have an old toothbrush. And in here, this bottle uh, is just an ordinary bottle that I do use. When you squeeze it, uh, the liquid will go up here and out on the front. Inside there is isopropanol alcohol. And that's what I do use in order to clean up these boards. So I just spill in a little, a little bit of this alcohol and then I do use the toothbrush and just rub it gently so that it looks clean afterwards and just wipe it off. I do always have a little bit of thermal paste or thermal grease, however you want to call this. And yeah, you do need this to make a good thermal conduction bet uh, connection between the heatsink and the AC chip itself. So do remember that you also need something like this when you want to solder your own BitX. Lastly, let's talk about the biggest thing here on the desk. And this is this soldering station. So this is basically like a really, really cheap Amazon soldering station. This probably costs like 30 to 50 bucks. Uh, I will put down a link to this in the description as well. If I would make a recommendation, I would say go for something that is a little bit more high on quality. These do function and I do use them on 355 degrees Celsius. 
as you might see here, 355 degrees Celsius. Good thing about them is if you do put them back into their slot, uh, after certain seconds, they drop down in the temperature because they then no longer heat up, they cool down. Uh, it's, it's okay. I do use these kits in my workshops because I got them sponsored. And uh, yeah, I, I broke already two of them. They're not really that good. Just wanted to say this here to be fair with you guys. I really would recommend to go for something that is a little bit more expensive, especially uh, like when you do order from Alice Shop, for example, soldering paste, take a look on their, their shop. They also do have high quality soldering equipment. I'm just saying this one here is really cheap if you want to get started. Mine, this one that you do see here right in front of me is now working for over a year with me and it does its job perfectly. So it's working. It's, I don't know, probably one out of 10 does not function or has some sort of a hiccup, I don't know. I mean, these units cost like 30 bucks, so don't expect too much from them. But from, from the point of what they can do, the temperature is pretty accurate and also the, the airflow that you can calculate with this knob here uh, or yeah, that you can set up is pretty, it's pretty simple. And yeah, that's basically all the tools that I do use in order to solder a bit eggs or do any repairs for a bit eggs. And I do think it's really helpful to get an overview of what you need when you want to solder your own bit eggs. Obviously, I'm not talking about any parts that you do need for the bit eggs itself. This is just the tool episode about the bit eggs and soldering SMD components in general. This does not only apply to a bit eggs specifically, it's more of a general guide on what kind of tools you do need if you ever want to do something like SMD soldering. And with that, I do thank everybody of you for watching this, viewing in here. If you do like this video, consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up so I do know that you guys do enjoy this content and I can produce more about this or more like this. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.